What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 24 of the Strength House Podcast. We are at CORE in Brookline, Massachusetts with the one and only Tony Gentle CORE. And tonight we are talking about everything from strength training to writing, content creation, cats, Star Wars, and maybe even the most explosive thing you've seen on this show so far. (laughs) The Strength House Podcast. Featuring Greg Robbins and Tony Bonvecchio. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Strength House Podcast. I'm the little midget guy over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sit on the bench. <laughs> I was going to stay here for a little bit. <laughs> we didn't really test run that one. All right, let's go from the top. Welcome to Strength House Podcast. This is episode 24, and we are on location at CORE in Brookline, Massachusetts, with the CORE man himself, Tony Gentle CORE. Hello, hello. And the other bald Tony, Tony Von Vecchio. Um, I call you guys Tony B and Tony G, even though I know, even when Tony G uh, was no longer with us on a day-to-day basis, you were a little upset to kept calling you Tony B, even though you were the only Tony oh, that that's true. Yeah. No, But Tony now. Your, your spirit lived on. <laughs> Although my music been, I hear, it didn't last long. Not so, so much. Not the techno <laughs> part. No. no. I don't think I've listened to techno since the only influence yeah. by you. Techno Tuesdays has no longer been a thing at the CSP. I think it's gone. <laughs> but it lives on here, I'm sure. Techno no, it every does. Day. It does. All right, so how are you guys doing today? Great, I'm great. I just got done coaching. You guys came in, and now we all fit, which I was yeah. surprised me. <laughs> yeah. Got the extra wide lens on today. Yeah. First ever, uh, I guess, offsite shoot of the Strength House podcast. We've had many different studios, but we've never been in a different facility. Yes. So, yeah. so normally you're in a, what a kitchen. <laughs> kitchen, yes. uh, <laughs> spare bedroom. Uh, so you're actually in the gym. Yeah, we're in the gym. We've done like a dining. Yep. To the kitchen area. Done Greg's um, backyard. We did a backyard <laughs> one. And technically, after tonight, there's probably only one more episode left that will ever be filmed in the original. That's right. House. Then you're going to be doing it so then we'll on another location. In our location. In the actual strength house. Yeah, yeah, in the actual strength house. So, exciting stuff. But we're super excited. Thanks for having us oh, down here. Oh, thanks for you guys to make it in. We get to catch up and, and see you guys. And I don't know when the last time I saw you. I know I, I made here and there, but yeah, it's been a yeah. while. Yeah, probably a little longer for you guys because we saw each other somewhat recently. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> um, and Tony, uh, we brought beer, so probably is this the first beer I ever drank? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the first alcoholic beverage drink under my uh, ownership of this facility. I am proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> we did a good thing here. So but I, I don't know if I should close the windows or not. Or... No, it's a, we actually got a liquor license. <laughs> so, it's okay. So if anybody wants full pours, come on down. To- <laughs> All right. So as usual, before we start talking about training and other fitness-related things, we have to uh, crack open the first beer of the night. So, and what do you have going over Well, there? I got a uh, uh, Zevia ginger root beer. From, from Whole Foods. <laughs> zero <laughs> calorie. There you go. Zero Very calorie, zero percent alcohol, caffeine free. <laughs> no artificial <laughs> sweeteners. So it's this is this is the stuff right here. If you're looking for See a beer, yeah. beer, no artificial sweeteners or coloring. <laughs> Legit. All right. It reminds me of Zima. Remember Zima? Z. Bruce. Isn't that uh, Bruce Willis? Second. Uh, I think it was like a, an alcohol. Oh no, he was wine cooler. Yeah, Bruce Zima Willis. was like a commercial where everyone was like playing a hardcore game of basketball like in this park. And then when the game of basketball, like during timeouts, they would drink Zima and it was <laughs> advertised as like the alcohol beverage you drink while doing athletic activities. While doing... <laughs> I don't know, I guess it didn't really have staying power. <laughs> yeah. Our alcoholic beverage of choice hasn't changed like no matter what we're doing. No, it's still, still beer. You guys will be proud though. My, uh, my father-in-law was in town with his, with his wife a couple weeks ago in Boston, and I told them to go to Treehouse on the Greenway. Trillium. Oh, Trillium. 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 My bad. See? Trillium. But yeah, they, they, they enjoy they that. Oh, awesome. yes. Nice. Very cool. So I, I, I only knew that because listening to 
you guys. It's like, okay, we gotta go to. <laughs> We're doing our job. <laughs> We're doing our <laughs> job. Educating the masses. We were saying the other day that Treehouse probably at least should give us a free case of beer after all the people we've sent. That's awesome. Every time we go, we run into a client, a former client, somebody who is trained with us somewhere along the way. Yes. Yeah. So which one do we have tonight? So we have Treehouse Bright. So there are many variants of Bright, and actually two episodes in a row now that we've done a repeat beer, but yeah. a different variation. So I believe we've had Bright with Citra on. I don't think we have Bright with Nelson. No, but this is the OG Bright Double IPA uh, brewed with Mosaic. We picked this one up uh, last week. And before we dig into this, I want to, uh, to make a special toast. Those of you out there in the internet world may have seen a, a certain somebody to my right who deadlifted 700 pounds of his meat the other day. I want to Peace. propose a toast to Greg Robbins yeah. in a 700 well, pound please, deadlift. Sir. Thank you. Well, thank you. Sir. Absolutely thank phenomenal feat of strength. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. It's on uh, the Strength House Instagram. It's on Greg's Instagram. It's all over because it's a big deal. <laughs> you <cry. laughs> yeah. and want to hear my voice crack as I'm <laughs> screaming. Yes. And don't worry, we did celebrate with many beers afterwards. Probably a couple too many, but... Yeah, I said some kind of PR. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You joined the Portland Craft Beer 700 pounds of uh, alcohol consumption yep. club. <laughs> sure did. All right, so uh, as we said, Tony General Gore on the Strength House podcast. Uh, for those of you out there who don't know Tony G, shame on you. But as we're cracking into this first beer, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, who you are, and why oh boy. you're such a goddamn oh, legend. God. That, uh, well, um, back in 1976, <laughs> my parents banged. They made me. <laughs> Good start. Uh, so, uh, as you guys know, I, I co-founded Crusty Sport Performance uh, back in 2007. Uh, before that, I worked as a personal trainer in New York for five years in corporate fitness, hooked up with, with Eric on the internet. It was funny, at my wedding, it was like, Eric talks like, yeah, Tony and I met on the internet, Pete, Tony and I met on the internet, Dean, met on the internet, <laughs> Lisa, met on match.com. I was like, man, I have no friends that I met, met in real life, like it's all internet based. But uh, yeah, so 2007, uh, opened up Crusty Sports Performance with Eric and Pete. Um, around that same time, started doing a little bit of writing, um, kind of getting my name out there via Team Nation, Mentel, and stuff like that. And, um, and now I have my own space in Boston, uh, Core in Brookline. And um, yeah, that's about it. Like, <laughs> well, that's a very, uh, very succinct I, synopsis. I just feel like, you know, it's, uh, I, don't know, I just don't like talking about myself that much, I guess. But Well, we'll do some talking. Yeah, let's do yeah, it. You've been, uh, you, know, you guys were... were Co-workers before you and I were co-workers, but I remember were. Greg went to one of the one of the in services that uh, second CSP, you know, and, um, yeah. and then you, you, I think you just drove out randomly, and I, I think it was, I was talking to him about like low back stuff. And you're in the yeah. front row, doing your notes. <laughs> yeah. and I was yeah. like, man, this guy's really into this in service. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I remember I came to visit, like on one of my off days from uh, when I was working at TPS, and I wore a Ryan Mopley. Yeah, so that's sure. right. And I was so like, I got hey. the in with you right away. Like, Nobody knows about I went this. through a, a Ryan Montluban uh, phase. So did I. Yeah. Or, I my, ex, don't my ex broke up with me, and I had to listen to sad white guy music, and I was like, Yeah. <laughs> I, I, phenomenal I, band. I do like Ryan, but I haven't listened to him since that dark phase in my life. <laughs> no. I don't listen to nearly as much of that stuff anymore either. <laughs> it's like, I, I that's guess not I'm not suitable for death. I've grown, I've grown up a little like I don't listen to music and feel sorry for myself as right. much as I used to. Uh, but, you know, once in a while I do, then that's the music for it. So. Well, we've been co workers, yep. training partners, yep. friends. I gotta say, something you passed on to me was a, was a love for gangster rap. I didn't yeah. like the techno quite so much. Um, but East like, Coast rap, not East. so much gangster rap. Okay, so I, I should know 90s hip hop in particular. I did just watch Straight Outta Compton the other night. So it did. Awesome movie. Good movie. Good show. Yeah. yeah, of course I did. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot it existed. It was one of those moments. Do you ever have moments where like you meant to watch a movie and you forgot it leaves your head and then someone brings it up and you're just so pumped because you're struggling to find something you want to watch and they bring it up and you're like, Shit, I never watched that. And then you can just go home and go to the house and get I made the mistake of scrolling through the movie channels and finding it just starting at ten thirty on like a Tuesday night. Ooh, man. 
Yeah, made it through? Cool. I did. I did. <laughs> so that's not a short movie. No, it's no, not. It's cool. Wake it up next time. <laughs> <episode, laughs> but definitely worth it. That was a great movie. Yeah, it was really a great. Movie. Movie. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. The whole time I was like, at first, I was like, is Ice Cube playing Ice Cube? And I'm like, no way that. he's playing Ice Cube. He's too young. But he looks, God, he looks just like Ice Cube. <laughs> and then and then I like looked it up afterwards. It's like, Ice Cube Cube's son plays yeah. Ice Cube. Like, oh, that's what's wrong. Who would, play, who would play me in a movie? That's what I, I want. That's what I want to know. Uh, who would play us? In a, uh, first of all, what the, what the movie would be about? I have no idea. I mean, <laughs> obviously, if Matt Damon shaved his head, you guys are that's spitting that's, 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 yeah. Well, uh, yes, I, I agree, but <laughs> some people told me I look like John Malkovich, which isn't at all cool. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> great actor, though. Great actor. Um, I was going to say, maybe... If, uh, Jason Statham. Okay, like Jason I'll take Statham. that. I'll take that. I'll go with a complimentary one. I'll yeah. take that. <laughs> um, so, what the people out in, in the cyber universe there may not know is you're a huge movie guy, too, yes. right? And something that I've always admired about you, it's something that we're trying to really establish in the Strength House is uh, to, yep. get, to get people passionate about things that are outside of fitness. Because mm-hmm. life is about balance. Sure, we love to lift, we love to coach, but we all love other stuff, too. So, we've covered a lot of stuff on your list already. Music, movies. Cats. Uh, we got three cats. cat people <laughs> at the desk here right now. Yeah. Which I don't know if you'll find three yeah, tougher no. motherfuckers yeah. who love cats. We're, we're <laughs> the strongest cat lovers, <laughs> group of cat lovers in the history of the internet right now. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't know why poor people don't like cats. They like lions, but they don't like cats. I'm a dog guy too. I was a dog guy yeah, first. I grew up with dogs, but you know, I have a cat that acts like a dog, so that's like the it's the best of both worlds. It's true. You feel the same way. It's just cute as shit. Yeah. All right. So, training wise, now we can talk about training. Yeah. Well, we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the main reason I came here is just shoot the shit with you about well, would, training related. Yeah. Things. I mean, I and I that's what I think about the strength house. Is that Deal with it, guys. Because I love the <laughs> fact that you you are championing. Like, there is a life outside of lifting weights, and, you know, obviously it's our passion, but I do think it is important to have hobbies and interests outside of, like, I'm not I'm not sitting at home for you to come in on Friday night, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, some people, I mean, and believe me, I know people that do it, and that's their thing, and that's cool, but I'd rather go to the movies or watch Netflix or pet my cat. Like, I don't know, like, <laughs> yes. there's a balance. One day you're gonna die, and you're gonna be lying on your deathbed, and probably the only thing you're not gonna want to say is, "Well, I didn't have a lot of life experiences and make a lot of friends, but I know a shitload of stuff." Oh, damn, I, I, <laughs> damn, I know that Voltaire cup <laughs> inside and out. So keep that in mind as you decide what you're doing on a Friday night. But to each their own. Uh, but it, I'm gonna try to segue that into one of the questions we want to talk about, which is, um, you know, when you were at Cressy Sports Performance. Obviously, the, the, the clientele there is predominantly youth athletes, mm-hmm. a lot of athletes, some general pop. But you always said that you really enjoy training general yep. pop. And so now that is, that's shifted to more, yep. you know, I don't know what the percentages you can tell me, but probably it's inverse. It's to like 98% general pop. <laughs> <laughs> so what are, um, I guess, some of the things that you do differently with general pop uh, training-wise than when you were programming for so number one, like, I, I swear a lot more while I'm coaching, because <laughs> that did not bode well when you're coaching 13 year olds. Like I kind of had to temper my, my language. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the cool thing is I get to swear more. Um, but programming wise, honestly, there's not a ton. Like I still kind of operate on the assumption like I still want people to train like athletes. Like of course I'm not worried about one rep maxes as much or doing anything too zany, like like putting chains on a barbell and squatting or going outside and doing a bunch of that ball stuff. But um, but I still think it's important. Like honestly a lot of people I work with they're they, they have high stress jobs, so lawyers, businessmen, doctors. And when they show up and they say like, yeah, we're gonna push the sled a little bit, we're gonna we're gonna go outside because like there's a one way street on the other side of this wall that we're facing. Um, and there is a brick wall that I can throw med balls against. So assuming that no one's gonna I can have people throw a med ball against the wall, which they never do. Yeah. Um, we 
can load up the trap bar and do some deadlifts because they, they feel like that's being athletic that they're not sitting on a leg extension machine or I, I have people stand a lot like they, they get enough they sit enough of enough at work or on the way to work on the way from work um, you know doing doing a, a, a Bulgarian split squat is, is athletic to them um, so there isn't a ton of difference as far as the exercise selection you, you can kind of see the barbells in the background like there's Buffalo bar, safety squat bar. Um, you know, I can I can vary the exercises to the individual. So I'm a deadlift guy. You guys know me. I'm, I like getting people strong. And yeah. you know, the tagline of my facility is because heavy people lift themselves. So it's not like people are going to walk in with the assumption that yeah, we're going to stretch a lot. No, no, <laughs> yeah. we're we're, we're going to lift. Um, but I, I use the assessment as a way of like figuring out, okay, you you're telling me where 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 point B is, like you want to do this, this, and this, I got to figure out where A is, and then then that's where that's where I figure out, okay, this is the variation we're starting with, which, okay, trap bar doesn't, we're going to start there, you know, whether or not we go to a straight bar, who knows, but um, a lot of the gen pop people, like, that's that's home base then, like, I'm not concerned about them competing in, in a power lifting meet, so we're just going to do trap bar, but, but long story short, they're all deadlifting, they're all squatting, they're all pressing, pulling, throwing shit. Um, you know that, 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 that in a lot of ways the programming is really the same. It's just like really doing a better job of matching the the, the right variation of moving people for that. Cool. Uh, and I like one thing you said. Of, you know, when you're thinking about people that sit all day, and and I've thought about this. You know, sometimes you get people that want to do more lifting oriented stuff, but also you know lose a significant amount of body fat. Yep. All, picking all variations where you have to stand or support yourself. That in itself is going to be way more uh, caloric intensive um, where as far as they're just doing more work. Like they don't need to sit in, while they're working out. And I think, uh, especially with jump hop people, that's, that's super important. Cool. Yeah, so I remember you saying that a long time ago as far as like training groups or training people with fat loss in mind. Like, don't let them sit down, don't let them lay down to keep them standing as much as you can. That's yep. something I've carried with me for a long time. And uh, something that made all the sense in the world, but I've never really thought about it this way, is a lot of times we think of trying to make programs more athletic is getting away from like being on two legs all the time, like squat bench deadlift type stuff. Uh, but when you put it that way, that these people are sitting a lot and not doing anything athletic, <laughs> simply you know, throwing a med ball, pushing a sled, yeah. getting on one leg at a time, that that's incredibly more athletic than what they're used to doing. Yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't take anything crazy. It's just taking the ba uh, basics and applying it to somebody. Doing farm that does anything. Like doing yeah. farming, something as simple as grabbing two kettlebells over there and walking outside. Well, for somebody, doing them in here is okay. Um, but once I say, hey, we're doing outside, they're like, fuck yeah. <laughs> right? And then it's just like, they have like an audience out there. Like, you know, it's like, you know, if you make a car crash because they're looking at you, then yeah. Like, um, <laughs> But just, I mean, even farmer carries is athletic, you know, and it just gets them out of their, I mean, I wouldn't say comfort zones, I feel like farmer carries are pretty user friendly, but they're not doing that type of stuff on their own or their current plan. So they come here and do stuff like that, and it's, you know, it's, it's awesome. Plus, plus the music player, you guys walked in earlier, I had my 90s hip hop playing, and it's And I can cool. attest, yeah, to the carries outside, because I was kind of driving slowly. Oh, there's Tony like, Shad. Like, that was the first right, thing I started. Right, right, right. It's either his gym or someone's looting his gym. I don't know. But <laughs> Which I, yeah, that's that's. I mean, that's a whole other. I'm, I'm scared of that. But that, that I'm, I'm in a pretty safe neighborhood, so it seems like, pretty safe. Yeah, you can um, get some of those awesome like, steel like, uh, things to come down over your windows. Right. Like, bars, yeah. like a CD liquor store kind of thing. But maybe down the road. Maybe it's bad. <laughs> well, one thing I've been impressed with so far watching you train a couple of people that you were when we first walked in is uh, how well you use a small space. Yeah. Like, what's the square footage here? 800 square feet. Okay, so 800 Tiny. square feet, you know, <laughs> we, we came from a very big facility yeah. where people could be spread out. Um, how do you, what have you done specifically to kind of maintain that high energy vibe, that good atmosphere in such a small training environment? I, I only bought what I needed. Uh, no, no, item one was getting that I was going to be um, you know, big three guy, squat, bench press, deadlift. I needed a power rack. I needed plates. And a lot of, 
not everything in here is brand new either. So when I when I was like, okay, what, what kind of equipment do I need? I have 800 square feet. I definitely need a power rack. Um, but I do want some open space because I need space for people. I mean, you guys know it, at Custy Sports Performance, it was, there was a, the way it was designed was like, there was a flow to the to the workout. Like, we're almost over here, we kind of go over here, we do our, our movement work, and over here we go med ball, and all the, the weights over here, so the people weren't getting each other's way. Um, so I knew I wanted an area where people could warm up, but then also be able to do their, um, their weight training a little bit out of the way. So, um, so yeah, I, I just bought what I needed. Um, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm a pretty minimalist guy. Um, I, I didn't let my uh, eyes get bigger than my, my, uh, my budget. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, the rack, the, the place I bought used from Boston University, about the only thing I spent a, a, a similar money on was the rack and, and some of the barbells. I knew I needed stuff that I wanted to make sure they were durable. Um, but everything else is more or less, I, I, I found some guy in PVD that was selling stuff out of his garage. You know, bought plates, I don't care if my plates match. Like, I just need to wait. And then, uh, but yeah, I, I just knew that I'm uh, pretty minimal. I just wanted guys to come bar, like dumbbells and barbells. And that's, that's what I got. And then the rest of the, and then I can comfortably fit six people in here. Not comfortably, that's about top end. Like comfortably is like three or four. Um, the most I've had in here is six, which 300 square feet. If I was just doing kettlebells, fine, you could probably fit more than that. But when you have three people deadlifting, one person squatting, another person doing carries, it gets a little bit like, like we're 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 getting each other's way a little bit, but uh, um, but yeah, like with 800 square feet, like I you know I knew that having I was gonna have two, three, four people in here at a time, so I just bought what I needed, and then that was that. Here's a fun question. See if it like if it works. But for people at home, maybe they have a home gym, or we'll just say they have a home gym, or they own their own gym. What is like two or three pieces of equipment you just couldn't live without? For a home gym. Yeah, absolutely necessary. Like outside of, let's say, uh, like a barbell, a squat rack, and a bench. So, a couple things that get a lot done in one piece of equipment. I think a TRX, or uh, even better, yet, yeah, honestly, a jungle gym is half the price. Uh, I'm not sponsored <laughs> by TRX, so. We're definitely not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, we get a lot done with that. Um, I honestly, like, I have a pretty good set of kettlebells. I, I mean, I, I get a lot of versatility out of them. We can swing, we get ups, and I can do goblet squats, I can do rows, I can do presses. Like, I'm not just using them for swing and get ups. Um, I think that's pretty important. Um, and I'm trying to look what I'm looking I'm trying to, like, cheat and, like, look like, what I got. But, but um, you know, on bands, honestly, like, we've been just doing a lot with bands as far as tech. I mean, I saw a cool thing that uh, Matt Eberman put up with a uh, hotel workout on Instagram. And I was like, and, like floor pressing with it, deadlifts, and it's like, all right, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. But I mean, I use my bands for lateral walks and more walks and pull parts and stuff like that. But but I would say, bar, I, like trap bar would be important. I know you said no barbells, but that, that to me is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a special yeah, yeah, that's a, I meant like a straight bar, but yeah. So if that's yeah. the case, then I, I think a trap bar is pretty important. To see if I feel like when I, when I am introducing a deadlift to once they, once they uh, graduate from the kettlebell, they're going back to a trap bar. Uh, and that's usually where, where people are going to stay anyways. And, then, and plus, I can do single leg work. I can do carries. You can do loads with it. This is, that is, in and of itself, a pretty versatile piece of equipment, too. Relatively cheap, too. Yeah, I was going to say, like, of all the bars you can get, like a trap bar is you know, even new. It's under 200 Oh, my God. And I don't understand why there's, there's, like, those trainers that come in and observe me, and they see I have two. Like, my arms are missing even have one. And they look at like a big commercial gym. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, it like it's like ten thousand dollars. Like, yeah. kidding me? Like, I would be like, I would just buy one myself and bring it in. Like, yeah, I don't understand. Like, that that to me is a very very valuable piece of equipment. Yeah. And, and how many do we have at CSP? Four, three. I and mean, we had quite a few. Three or four. Yeah. yeah. And the funny thing is, like, in our home, I know as we've been looking for used equipment, it's really easy to find people selling their trap bars Absolutely. all the time too, and it's like. I, was, I actually I got my my two uh, pop, Texas Power Bars from a gym that was in so I forget the gym they were closing down but I went and bought two Texas Power Bars from them that were relatively unused. Mm -hmm. um, I got my Texas deadlift bar from uh, a Titan Barbell um, out in Medford. Yeah. Um, I just drove to this 
facility, you picked it up. He's like, hey, I used it once. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll buy it off you. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, so buying used barbells is the way to go. I mean, I've had, a, I've been fortunate where I, I, was, I was given a few, but one of my clients owned a, a yoke bar. He's like, hey, you want it? I'm like, yeah, like, I'll take it. Like, <laughs> like follow me. Yeah, I definitely use it, so. Yeah, the bands are a good point. Like, uh, cable stacks, cable yeah. columns are exceptionally expensive. And I don't have one, so yeah. I can do rows of the bands. I do full pieces of the bands. Yep. Um, and then your, your vanilla band pull parts and band resistant push-ups and stuff like that. So, you know, getting a, a, a nice array of bands is, is nice, too. But I, I can, because, again, I don't have a, a cable system in here. Like, I have this little thing on the wall that allows me to carabiner it up, but I don't have an actual weight stack. So I kind of set the, um, the, the rows up against that and have people do a seated row or a standing row or even a one-arm standing row um, with the bands. And it's just, I mean, it's tension. The body doesn't care if it's a band or a cable. It it's tension. So. Yeah. You can't, like, nail down the exact resistance, but for an exercise like that, yeah. probably yeah. not the first time band in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, all the cable stacks are always different resistances anyway, so you're usually working to it. Stuff you do with a cable. You no, know, if I had, if I if I get a two point like location, I might consider getting a, <laughs> a you know a chest supported row or a cable system or um, definitely not a Kaiser. I'm not a I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of that, but I'm really not doing a good job of like like getting really people to be like, hey, I'm gonna send Tony some some equipment. Like, no, I, don't, I don't use well, that. Anyway, I it might work perfectly. And all the stuff that you said you don't like will show up. You wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really prided myself on like not being a dick when people would ask dumb questions of me as a coach. But one that always got me was like at Cressy, there are the two different cable stacks. Every day. Every and day. like they're numbered differently. <laughs> yeah. And somebody would always be like, hey, uh, this number on this stack, what does that equal on that stack? And I'd always be like, I don't know. <laughs> and just leave it at that. Like, you don't know. I'm like, yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't care. <laughs> just to hopefully that they would understand that like it did fucking. Right, like it's just, a, <laughs> just a cable exercise. That's probably one where we, like, should, we could have like put a sign up or something. Just, like, nobody knows what the difference is between. Because you, you think about it from their end, it's like, what if we did know? Then I guess it was good they asked, because then we could just figure it out. But uh, yeah, that's getting like, asked the same question multiple times every day. Just just start random, like throwing out random numbers. Forty. <laughs> yeah, Forty. I don't know. Count the plates. Four plates down. Four plates down is four plates. Down. Uh, yeah, so those things are all variable anyways. Um, we have another, I wanted to keep it, you have a training related question. I know we have some that are a little off of the training side of things. Yeah, something that, well, um, it's worth noting that you became a business owner and a new yeah. dad yep. in a short amount of time. very short amount of time. Yeah. So kudos to you for taking on two of life's <laughs> Well, the business one was kind of like thrust on me. Like, I was like... <laughs> I, I was, it was funny because I think you guys might have read it where I wrote a whole blog post. I'm like, I'm not a businessman, but I'm a business. Like I don't, I have no, I don't want to own a gym. I have no interest in owning a gym. I don't want to have a gym because I was subleasing underneath yeah. uh, a person that had the space before me. Um, so I just showed up, paid my, paid what I rented. Like basically, if I used the facility X amount of hours a month, I paid my rent for the month, and I got to use it as much as I wanted. No overhead, like whatever. Um, then when she left. I was like, hey, I'm leaving. And I was like, uh, I bought all this equipment. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to put it. Uh, she's like, well, if you want to take over the lease, you can. So, And that's when I was like, I put pen to paper. And it, it actually ended up being cheaper for me to take it over than to continue renting, assuming that I was still going to have uh, a couple people subleasing with me. Um, and I knew I was going to, because I actually introduced her to somebody else who ended up staying. And, so knowing that I was going to have one or two coaches right out of the gate subleasing under me, it, and it was actually going to be cheaper for me to take it over. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll do it. Um, so just erase that blog post I wrote. Uh, like, <laughs> I like, oh, think no. I actually <laughs> stumbled upon it today. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how I got into it, but there was a link of different like business-related articles, and I kept. I think it, was, it might have just been on on your blog, and it went back, and I was, like, was kind of like skimming through and rereading it, and I was like, this is what it's doesn't want to open it. I forgot that it was that yeah, it, was really, like, it was probably seven. like, I might have written that one like maybe like three or four months before I actually like took it over. So I was like, ha ha ha, I don't want to be a gym owner. <laughs> and then, oh, I'm a gym owner. <laughs> like, oh, because I was reading, maybe because I started by reading the one that you put up. 
today or yes, yesterday. Yes, right. I linked to, to, to it today. I linked to it today. Well, my yeah. 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 You guys read that? Oh, well. Yeah, cool. But, but yeah, but, so going back to you said, yeah, business owner and dad at a short amount of time. So, high stress stuff, right? No, no, no. no. <laughs> so, we know stress is stress is stress. Right. Owning a business, having a kid, training your ass off. How have you managed all those stresses? How have you been able to continue to train hard, to continue to get a training effect? Maybe uh, this guy could chime yeah, in. Yeah, I was going to say, like, the guy <laughs> to your right with my program. So, <laughs> so um, this could be a collaborative answer. Uh, well, personally, like I feel, I'm lucky in that I'm married to somebody who's into the, into the lifestyle as well. So she is very much a gym rat herself. Maybe not quite to the degree of I am, but she definitely is. Goes to, like was grown up going to the gym plus she was an athlete herself. So she already understands that if we don't go to the gym, we're gonna fucking kill each other. <laughs> and, and like you know, and, that, and then we're not sleeping because it's, you know it's keeping us up. It's like that is like the one time where it's like stress relief. Really going to the, uh, go, go lift. So um, we kind of are, are each other's rock in the sense like I get, we both get up pretty early. I get up, watch, watch Julian, she goes to the gym to, before she goes to work. I'm, I'm kind of daddy daycare in the mornings and then the nanny shows up and I can go to the gym. So we, we scheduled in a way, even when she was on maternity leave, which is kind of cool, because um, I go to BU and I train a lot. And I'm friends with the skin and conditioning staff there. So I train in the athlete gym at least two or three and we would, like when she was on maternity leave for the first three months, we would bring Julian with us in his, in his carrier. And like, I would do a set, watch him, she'd do her set, watch him, like <laughs> something. And then if he woke up, it was literally me like doing a set, doing a farmer carry with him, to rock him back to sleep, <laughs> putting him down, and then she would go. So it is a team effort that we had. Um, so I think I had that in my favor. So I, I didn't really drop off my training all that much. Like I, even when we first had Julian back in January, I was still hitting my, all my lifts. I didn't. I mean, every now and then there was like a, a skip lift, but more or less I was there 40 a week getting the lifts in. Um, and, and really, I had no excuse when I spend X amount of hours a week in the facility too. So I can I can get something in. Um, so that that's in my back pocket too. Um, but I can't say my training has changed um, all that much from both of those two life events. Like it's still. You make time for it. I mean, Eric talks about it all the time back in the day when he, it's like, I have two facilities and twins, and, you know, it's like, you make the time. Like, and if, it, if it's a priority in your life, you're going to make the time for it. And it's definitely a priority. So, I really, I mean, that's just, I don't know, there's no sexy answer. It's just, <laughs> just fucking do it. <laughs> and, yeah. and so, it, it's not all talk, because I, you know, we didn't skip a beat doing the programs. It was... It, and we've talked about this before, how valuable like weekly updates are in RPEs, and so since we were already using those, it was pretty easy to kind of just, you know, there was, early on, yeah, there was notes a few times where you were like, yeah, I got like three quarters of the way done, and then Julian was just being that next Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just had to be, I, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I didn't do the, the core work, I did yeah. because I had to, I, I got the deadlocks in, but yeah. not, not the... <laughs> Um, so I was going to say, you know, there's there's real RPEs, there are Instagram RPEs, which is the real RPE minus two. Okay. So <laughs> is, yeah. is there such thing as a baby RPE where, like, it should have been, like, an eight, but it was really, like, a ten because you yeah. slept for, like, yeah. three hours. No, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> sleep, like, sleep deprivation is definitely a thing when you have an infant. Like, there's no, there is no joke about that. That is definitely 100% a thing. Um, but, you know, to her credit, like, Lisa was the one that got up every night and five in the middle of the night to two or three times a night. And I'd be like, I'd wake up in the morning, oh, he wake up for And she said, yeah, three times. So like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, but uh, no, yeah, it's definitely like the, the lack of sleep I mean, will play into it. And um, you definitely feel on some days. But I just think just going in and doing the work is, you know, I, I didn't make it a, 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 an excuse. I was just like, okay, I'm going to do it. And if I, have to, if I have to temper it down, I just temper it down. Yeah, and in fact, I feel like I'm mean, gonna have to look back at it exactly, but I feel like no progress was lost during that time. No, you? no. And then I mean, I, I maintained pretty well, and like you, you know, like I, I've always been wanting to get the, hit that 600 pound deadlift. That's kind of like my thing. I don't, I don't really give a shit about my squat. You no, know, not even my bench press. Really. Like I, I, I don't mind having a decent bench press, but 
Um, but the deadlift's kind of like what it hurts after. me that you say that. I, I, yeah, well, you're, 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 you're a good like our like come on like I just I'm not a good I'm <laughs> yeah. not a good bench press. We are, we are quite the opposite <laughs> yes. in terms of like I mean I feel my bench press is okay. I mean I I I, I 300 315s what we're I'll, I'll get it higher but you know well, but uh, 315 I was because you were always like I don't need to bench press three plates but deep down in my it was always like my goal for yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you. you're gonna do it. <laughs> but but the deadlift has always kind of been the one thing that's eluded me the the six hundred pound deadlift and um and I in that if anything I feel like I was making really fucking good progress yeah, really until my little adductor strain a, a couple yeah. weeks ago but I feel like for that that'll be fine. I'm, I'm predicting uh, that could happen before January two thousand seventeen right. <laughs> or eight. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> you done your first root beer? I got uh, I got one more sip. <laughs> All right, and just a note on Bright. So, like, uh, you know, we're super spoiled when. So, so of all the treehouse beers, Bright is definitely on like the lower end of desirability. People tend to get a little bit disappointed when it gets released. Um, yeah. But I gotta say, this is still a great beer. I've enjoyed it very, very much. Yeah. It, it's the mosaic's not my favorite, but for all of you out there in Beerland who piss and moan when this beer is released, <laughs> shame on you. It has a really cool <laughs> can. It is. Possibly one of my favorite cans. Right, and this is one that recently it, it went from just a label on a silver can to like a full blown what they call a proper can. So there's proper glassware and there's proper cans. So yeah, I know. Yep. And for those who can't say at home, it's like a it's John Lennon, I think. Oh, all right. Oh, I get it. So it's kind of like a play on a like a '70s concert poster type theme, which is cool for me. I don't know. I like it. But as Tony gets our Oh, yeah, look at that. Two here. Man. So, I told myself I wasn't going to go buy any beer this Wednesday. Usually we go to a brewery on Wednesday and do work there as our new mission office. Uh, we were going to skip That's it today, brilliant. but I could not <laughs> help myself. I knew we needed some beer for the podcast. So, I have a collaboration between Trillium and Stillwater Artisanal. This is Trillwater. It's a Goza. I don't think we've ever had a Goza on the podcast before. A Goza no. is a sour ale, usually brewed with something close to salt and some other herbs and stuff. So this is a New England Goza ale with Stonington sea salt and a bunch of other shit I can't pronounce. Uh, Nelson and Matika are the hops. So we got the old 50 cal opener. I have no idea what you just said. Whoa! Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tony. Our first <laughs> looks like I'm mopping tonight. <laughs> well, we're gonna be staying here late, cleaning up. All right. <laughs> I got paper Jeez. towels. I'm oh, sorry, man. No, don't worry. I don't give a shit. I'm just... This is the first time on a live podcast this has happened. I'm surprised. <laughs> well, I'm glad yeah, I didn't yeah. get it. Paper towels right here. I didn't shake this shit up at all. <laughs> the deal is, it is a w- Your wife just said classic. <laughs> hey, the good news is it tastes really good. Uh, People are going to walk in tomorrow and be like, why does it smell like beer? No, no, we're going to clean it. Oh, don't worry. Uh, well, let me clean it up, Greg. Why don't you pour yourself a little once this? Well, no, I feel terrible about it now. No, we're going to finish yes. the show. <laughs> <laughs> the show must go on. Well, we've never had a spill. We're going to finish the show. It took us 24 episodes. But we had to go to somebody else's turn <laughs> to, for it to happen. All right, Tony. So at our opening party for the Strength House, you can just like, <laughs> straight up pour a beer right on the <laughs> segue into a question. <laughs> I should have been on like the news or something. Um, I'm just gonna let Tony clean up. Uh, I'm listening. That's perfect. perfect. Yeah. All right, to mop that up later. That's that's entrepreneurship right there. You gotta, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Normally, I'd make the producer do it, but. <laughs> This is a discussion we had earlier today, um, but 
Well, well actually, I'm going to let you start with your question about the difficulty of getting your name out there and things like that. First. Yeah, so. I'm going to segue into that. I mean, um, well before we knew each other in person, I looked up to you as a coach because you were so visible online. Um, and you you were writing online. You were doing, you had a very lively blog. You were doing online coaching uh, way before it was like the thing to do. You established yourself as a, as a well-known online brand when it's very hard to do so. Very fewer avenues to kind of get yourself out there. Um, what, what would you say that you did well, like w one thing you did really, really well, yep. and you would do again if you could do it over again. Yep. And one mistake you think you made getting your brand out there, you would change if you could go back and do it all over again. Um, I think I would when I when I started doing it. So we're talking 2005, 2006 when I started doing what I would call my interpretation of writing. <laughs> um, there weren't many people doing it. So there weren't many other coaches out there who were, who were routinely putting out kind of outside of Team Nation. Like, yeah, people would submit articles to Team Nation. That was, that was my first indoctrination to fitness writing was watching, was reading Team Nation every week. So outside of that, there weren't many coaches who were on their own at their website, wherever, putting out content. So I think Eric was doing it, Mike Boyle, Mike Robertson, uh, Dan John. You basically and, made like a Mount Rushmore, right? Yeah, there. Like, that is, not, not that I'm putting, I'm not rooting, I'm not assuming that I am uh, on, on that Mount Rushmore, but um, I think every week now, even when I, when I was a coach at Cressy, at Cressy Sports Performance, the new intern classes would ask this question, and almost on a weekly basis I get it now via email. It's like, how do I get my name out there? How do I start? Um, fucking do it. <laughs> like, yeah. you want, you, you're, you're a writer. Like you went to school for journalism, paid a like, lot of money, right? For teach so, if that is not the best, I mean, Stephen King would say that too. Like, I, you know, if you read his on on writing book, like, how do you become a better writer? Right. I think his <laughs> like, rule is like two, that, two thousand words a day, every day, no matter. And he what. does it no matter what, like birthdays, holidays. I mean, he, from he has he has a, a a window of time from I forget what his window of time is, but he's in his room writing. And, and that's his, that's his ritual. I mean, I think ritual is important too, which we could talk about. It. But you know, basically, I just started. I was like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna submit some articles to Teen Nation. Maybe they'll take them, and I'm gonna start this blog. Which, you know, uh, um, you know, rather sadly, my first blog was called the G Spot. So, <laughs> uh, you know, which Pete 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 would I think he just he wrote about that last week actually. I was like, yeah, hey, like remember that? Like, yeah, I do. It was not, not the smartest uh, business decision. Maybe um, it was. Maybe it was. <laughs> but uh, I basically just started. And then, again, doing it at a time where there weren't many people doing it. And I just think over the course of time, if you write good content, actionable content, and relatable content, people are going to read it at some point, right? And it's going to gain traction. And people are going to start, hey, read this. And, you know, if you, and if, when you start writing for other publications, they go, to, they, they go to your website and they start reading more of your stuff. I, I, and I think a lot of people fail to realize that when they ask me that question, like, oh, how do I get to where you are in your career? I was like, well, I'm 15 years in. <laughs> like, so talk to me in 15 years, and then we'll talk. Um, but on my blog, like, I, I, I looked the other day, I have 2,023 blog posts. Like, that's a shit ton of writing. Like, and you're going to get good at writing. And I, and I don't necessarily consider myself a, a, a great writer, but I can look at stuff that I wrote back in the day and be like, <laughs> like that's not good like, compared to now where it's like okay that's, that's pretty good um, but over the course of 10 years I've written that's just my blog post that's not counting articles I've written for other various sites so um, I think the, the, the best piece of advice and the best thing that I did was I just started and I stuck to it um, it just never stops and I, yeah and, and, I, and I set my own schedule like I think you don't have to be writing every day you know writing a content and I think an important message too is that everything, everybody is a writer. You write an email, you're writing. You write a note, you're writing. You write a tweet, you're writing. Like that is writing. So writing doesn't always have to mean like you're writing this 1,000 page blog on deadlift technique. You know, it could just be writing an email to somebody like, hey, what are we doing this weekend? And that, that is writing. Um, but but in, in, in the sense of like fitness writing, uh, you know, you got, you got to have some kind of like structure and accountability to yourself. So if you're like Pete, for example, he writes one blog post a week 
it's, it's a damn good blog post every week. And it's, and it's, and it's, I, I forgot what day you release them, but they're, they're, they go out every, I'll say, Thursday. Um, me, uh, you know, before Julian came to the picture, I was probably averaging three to five a week, where it's like, okay, right? But I had a ritual where Lisa left to go to work for 8, 8 a.m. every morning, door shuts, computer comes on, and that's my writing time from like 8 to 11. And, you know, there's a little bit of Facebook, Instagram, checking in and stuff like that. But um, that was, that's kind of like when my creative juices I found were the best was within the morning. Um, and I just, that's what I did. That was just my schedule. Like, I just did it. Um, so it really fucking irritates me when people are like, How, what do I have to do? <laughs> I was just like, I just want to be like, just start. Like, it's as simple as that. And I'm sure you, you're the same way. I'm sure you would have the same exact answer. I would, I would, I hope, I think, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but. No, you're, you're right. And um, something that I always look back to is uh, my wife, when we were in college and she was my girlfriend and not wife yet, uh, she was, her senior year, she was doing her student teaching, and which was a shit ton of work because she had classes and she was working in a classroom and she had to do her own lesson planning. I remember she had this sign like above her desk with the big letters A I C, I'm like Allison Chains. Yes, I found like a rock girl. <laughs> nope, not Allison Chains. It stood for ass in chair, and there was in parentheses it says this is the only way things get done. I'm like that's awesome. So she just like had this reminder to herself that yeah. you just have to sit down and start. Yep. And once you start, yes. shit gets done. Yeah. And I and I and I would also you know going a little bit off topic to what you said like I would slightly disagree in the sense like. Um, like when I started, like it being harder than now, I would argue that it's harder now to get to get your name on there because everyone is trying to do it. So I, I don't get the I don't I forget the actual quote, but it's like it's never been harder to get heard, but it's harder to be heard. Now. So it's 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 never been easier to get your name on there now because with, with social media, podcasts, like it's pretty easy to get your content out there, but it's pretty hard for it to to stick. Attention because, spans are because shorter. Everyone is doing are, it. Everyone's yeah. buying for everyone else's attention. So, you know, I would argue that I started at a time when there weren't many people doing it, anyways. So then there, so I was one of the few that was consistently putting out content that was just put out there and it, it, it gained traction that way. But you're right. Back then it was a little harder because there was no Twitter, and Instagram, and Facebook right out of the gate. I mean, it was right at the cusp of like when all that stuff really blew up, where you start like a, posting your blog posts on Facebook to drive traffic. Um, so I guess it's easier than ever to get started. Sure. So just get yeah. started. Yeah. <laughs> but it, but yeah, that's, I think that's the, the speed bump that prevents a lot of people from, I don't know if it's intimidation or, you know, maybe Kate brought up, like, well, you know, everything's already been said. It's like, yeah, but they haven't been said in your voice, in your perspective, in your experiences. And that's what's different and that's what's authentic. You know, then it becomes to be whether or not you're a good storyteller and, like, you know, bring in the experiences and the conversation with Writing, and that takes practice. Yep. And um, that, that place is something that you had talked about earlier in terms of just the, the, the sheer way that Tony communicates certain things that makes him really yeah. fun to listen to. Yeah, I mean, and that's, if anything, that's a big piece of uh, uh, advice I got when I submitted my first article to Teen Nation, TC Luoma. I was like, hey, this is really good. Um, keep it up. But, like, you know, people want to be informed, but they want to be entertained. Uh, and that's how I felt. I've done a pretty good job over the years of. Maintaining, I, I guess you could say relevance, because um, I'm not. I mean, we talked about this before we went on air. It's like I don't really consider myself an innovator in the industry. Like I'm not somebody that has the brain of like these big wigs. It's like they're coming up with all the new stuff that we talk about and new exercises. It's like my brain doesn't work that way. I just, I just, you know, like Ben Bruno talks about exercise variations. I'm like, why the fuck did I not think of that? Like it's so <laughs> simple. Like how did I not enjoy seeing it? You know. And, there's just a lot of people like they're, they're the innovators, and I and, and I'm definitely more of the what do we say translator, where I'm, I I just I word vomit it back out in a way that's digestible to people, and that's entertaining. So you know if you throw in a couple like pop, pop, pop culture references and f bombs, you know people <laughs> people relate to it. Like I, I like to think that I write how I talk, um, and that and that just makes it more authentic and relatable to people. So. Um, you know, some people like it, some people don't, but some people don't like it. <laughs> uh, and, and I think, 
you know, you've, you've been super authentic and stuck to stuck to what's like instinctual for you, as I guess, as far as like how you're going to what you're going to do with information, um, which is something we've talked about on this podcast before. Is like a personality and Colby test. So a Colby test is like what you do instinctually, um, and they say that people can do three different things with information. They can feel like they're experts, which just they get one piece of information, they want to get every aspect of it. They want to know everything about like a certain subject. Yep. And then you have people in the more middle of the road, which are able to understand the information that the experts are putting out there um, and are good at disseminating it, translating it for the third crowd, which is people that just want to know what to do. Yep. They don't really don't know why they're doing it, they just want to know what to do. They want bullet point this, 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 and this. Um, and so, you know, I, obviously everyone has their place, and maybe everyone, but that middle of the road person, I think, is possibly the most important, uh, because without them bridging the gap between the other two, nothing would ever get done. And I, you know, and I mean, not to pat myself on the back, but when I, like, when I go out and speak, you know, when, I, when I present or, or, or around the country and the world, like, well, that's what they kind of say. It was like, you know, like that was very good because it was, I understood what you were talking about. Like, you know, and again, it's just having, I mean, maybe you're right. Like, it, it's, I, I, I think I do it naturally, but, um, but it, it definitely takes a little bit of practice. You know, and I think, you know, the, the, the writing has helped with that, be able to just like dissect information and make it more bite sized for people to understand. I think writing helps with that as far as like, you know, relating it in, 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 in person time. Like I think those those are both very complementary skills to have, and I also think just staying in your lane is important. Too. Important too. Like I don't I don't write about stuff that I'm not that I'm not either very confident in or have some kind of experience in. Like I don't know how many articles on the deadlift I've written. I've written a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, but you know, writing writing about shoulder health and shoulder you know, shoulder function, I'm, I'm pretty confident with that. So that's what I write about a lot. I'm writing about owning a business, I write about that. You don't see me writing a lot about nutrition. Fat loss, because um, I would get grilled. Like I mean, I'm not. I I, I mean, it's, I don't. That's not my strength, so I'm not gonna stick to it. And I think a lot of people get into trouble with their writing because they're they are trying to be right about everything, when, and then it it, it, uh, it fails because it's just not good and it's wrong and um, it's stupid. <laughs> like <laughs> it's not good. It's wrong. It's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people, I feel like too. Like one thing. Both of you guys have taught me because I think I'm talking about a lot of stuff that you, Tony G, are good at. But Tony B, you're also very good at these things with your background. Um, is like giving credit where credit is due. Yeah. Too. So that's something that never fucking happens in our industry. And it <laughs> Which <should>. is weird because <laughs> I feel people. I don't understand why people think like it's going to hurt their reputation by citing ref, like where the where, where references. Yeah. Um, if anything, people are gonna. Re- I think people are gonna respect you more for it. Uh, you know, one thing that my my wife and I did a workshop last weekend in Boston, and she was like, "You know what I like? What you do is like when you're talking about stuff, you're always citing like where you got this information from, or who you should read, read, read this information more into." And like, I'm always giving like, "Hey, I got this. Is not an original thought for me. I got it from this person. I'm stealing it from them." Uh, you use and- that term all the time, and it's like in jest. Uh, but it happens all the time. There's a lot of thievery in, in this course, industry. Yeah. And the fact that you call it like stealing is funny to me because you're so brutally honest that like you got this from somebody else. That honesty is very refreshing. And and I, I don't get why. I, I think there is some, because you see it on, especially lately, there's been a ton of stuff I've seen on Facebook and social media where people being called out for plagiarizing because they, they, they basically cut and paste like word for word stuff or they, or they, they, they copy me don't credit it and it's like why the fuck even risk it like yeah like i think people are going to respect you more for yeah. saying no one's gonna you're not going to get some coaching demerit points for writing about this thing and just saying hey so and so said this and then just then just elaborating on it like i don't like that's what you're supposed to like and for some reason people think that you know oh no like you know the, the people are gonna if i if i they got it's got to be an original thought or it's not gonna count it's like no like we're gonna respect you more for citing your references, and then and why risk it? You're not gonna you're not gonna make a bad reputation for yourself. Yeah. 
you've also done a really nice job in your career with surrounding yourself with really smart people sure. from whom you can learn <laughs> and like who you can cre yeah. you know, create content ideas. I would not be where I am without guys like yourself. Like, I mean, I think you guys can watch for it too. Like, being around that group of coaches, like, you're always going to get ideas of what to write about and, like, just the, the interaction between that we would have if you're on the, on the floor together. Um, you know, they keep you, they keep you sharp. If anything, the one thing I miss the most since I left Preston Sports Performance is being on the floor with you guys. Because that, just seeing, like, just listening to how we, we do different exercises or something that we read last night that we're implementing into a program, it's like, hey, why are we doing this? And then we explain it, we talk about it, and then, you know, and then obviously the interaction with, with athletes and clients. Like, we get, I get a lot of writing ideas just from questions I'm asked. But certainly being around a lot of smart, on-point coaches helps me out. But then you went and you know, you've got your partnership, your rotating seminars with Dean Somerset, yeah, and the products you yeah. put out. Like, you, you've done a nice job of, of surrounding yourself with, with smart well, people. Well, thank you. But I mean, and I give them all the credit in the world. Like, I, I, I just think it is important to get people. I would not be where I am today without the people who I'm friends with and network with and, you know, give credit to. And, you know, I just think, why burn bridges? Like, I, 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 I don't know. It's, maybe it's just my personality. <laughs> and I like to be humble, and, uh, but yeah, you know, I, it's, it's definitely, uh, yeah, that stuff, it, it, it blows my mind. And, you know, just like it yeah, I mean, maybe it could even strengthen their relationships, you know, if we do think there are some people out there that are more on the science-y, expert end of the spectrum, who blatantly, a lot of the stuff they write is not very fun to read, it's, you have to force yourself to read it. You cite them and you make their information fun to read. Both parties should see the mutual yeah. benefits of that, where it's like, "Hey, I just got this new information. Maybe it'll make a bigger impact." You help me put it. I think there. sharing that's that's a lost art too, or, or underappreciated art is, is sharing each other's information. Yeah, uh, John Goodman talks about that. He's one of the first guys that talked about that. Being like, "No, you." want to share other people's stuff because then they're going to share you know it's, it's not it, i wouldn't say it's like a an unwritten rule or some kind of like hidden rule but usually if, if, if somebody goes out of the way and i see somebody sharing my stuff a lot i'm going to reciprocate at some point just out of just you know i'm gonna i'm gonna oh who's this person sharing my stuff and if they're reading me and the chances are they're, they're probably pretty right and i'm like at least in the same line of thinking on how to coach and coaching views and programming and stuff like that they're probably going to be on similar way paths, I'm going to go check their stuff out, and then if I if I like something they write, I'm going to share it. Like I, I think it's definitely an underappreciated art as far as like sharing other people's content and how it will help you. Um, not and I'm not saying it should be like a selfish thing. Like sometimes just sharing shit for the sake of sharing shit, and being a decent human being is okay, and just being like, hey, I'm just doing it because I think it's a damn good article and I want to share it. Like there, there doesn't have to be some ulterior motive to it. Um, but yeah, like I think Goodman, I remember, I don't know how many years ago, but like, you know, like his, uh, I think he's one of the first guys that started doing like the best of, uh, best of the week stuff. Yeah, like, like, say, okay, these are the best articles I've read this week. And people are like, why are you, why are you linking to other people's websites? And he's like, this is good shit. And like, <laughs> and like, it's like, and, they, 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 and the idea is like, eventually people are going to reciprocate and like share your stuff, and it should be that way. Yeah. Um, I remember when he first got started, one, he got on my good side because he's one of the first guys to ever take something I wrote and like and use it or ask me even to write stuff for his yep. site. Um, but when he first came out, and it's funny because of an audiobook I'm listening to, uh, Perennial Seller talks about. Just download that today. Yeah, very good book. Okay. Uh, the Ryan Holiday, maybe his newest book, but I had maybe he'd already written before. But, um, so he talks about you know if you're going to innovate. The way you know you're innovating uh, is that you're going to make like a, a rift in whatever industry that people are going to be pissed off about what you're doing. Um, and I kind of got the gist where like a lot of people that I think are very smart, who had already been, had more of an elevated status in the field, were kind of shitting on what John was trying to do because they're like, oh, yeah, he's just like trying to get our information and put it out there, right? Make his, his like his own money and things like that. And in fact. You know, he stuck to his guns and did it, and that 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 became a whole. That's half of what the sites are nowadays. Yeah. Are just like 
hubs for other people's articles so that you can go to one place and not have to go. I remember setting up like my almost like my rounds where I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna go to this site and this site and this site. And it's like, well, now you can go to a site like that. He's kind of one of the first people to start doing that with repurposing information. We got places like T Nation or Bodybuilding putting new information out. Yeah, I'm sure he, he has some kind of like eloquent like algorithm that he probably can articulate. Like, like, but, but, the, but at the end of the day, you're right. It's just about you know sharing good shit and then you know making the industry better. Like, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Just for the sake of doing it, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Right. Yep. Okay. Do we get any good questions coming in from uh, from listeners? I saw you jot some stuff down. Um. Well, the one that. My favorite was what order is Tony's son gonna watch Star Wars in? Oh man, that is an epic question. Oh, Who asked man. that? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, tell you. I'm gonna. Oh man, I'm gonna see how I perked up, and I was like, all right. Um, <laughs> it took that long to talk about Star Wars. So there you go. Uh, Connor, we talked about be cats first. I'm gonna be old school and, and just go original trilogy, middle trilogy, and, and current trilogy. I got it. I got to keep it old school. That's how I I watch them. I know if you go online, there's like certain. People say, no, you gotta watch Empire, and then, and I'm like, no, I'm just gonna watch them in order. We're gonna watch them that way. I, and, I, and I absolutely will film the part where he realizes that uh, Darth Vader is Luke's father. I see that. I saw that in there where, where dads like film the, the kids' reactions to, like, like when they realize that Darth Vader is Luke's father. And I want, I'm definitely going to do that. Um, I'm, I'm totally waiting for that. Like I can't wait. That like the you know the, the red wedding for Game of Thrones. Like he's gonna be a little older before he watches that show. Um, Can you get a reaction of him? Showing him a picture of James Earl Jones and then telling him, and this That's is a- actually <laughs> <Darth Vader. laughs> That would be epic. This is the guy's actually Darth Vader. What? In real life. I'm so confused. <laughs> but I'm definitely going to go, like, you know, old school, original trilogy. I'd I, I like to skip the middle one, but yes, you want to skip it. I liked Rogue One. Or Rogue One was good. One? Yeah, until that. Yeah, if every, fine. like, Non Star Wars original movie is that good? Like I think we're we're gonna be we're gonna be good to go. Like the next one's gonna be that Han Solo movie. But yeah, Rogue One was awesome. I was actually in one. I was in London last summer, um, doing a workshop. They were telling me that they they were filming parts of Rogue One in the the tube station where we were at. So I was in this tube station, and it ended up being uh, in Rogue One. So I was like, I was in. <laughs> Whatever, like fortress, like I was there, I was in it. Like, so I, I remember seeing, like, oh, yep, that's the train, that's the. That's how I was there. Um, just because I feel like I don't get the chance to ask you this, and I've gotten lots of good things to watch by asking, what is a good, what is a very good movie, like either on, on Netflix right now, that, that we probably haven't heard of? So in, I'll tell you one in theaters that, look, that many people haven't heard of. They should go see Baby Driver. Oh, I saw the previous one. Yeah, yeah. Epic, awesome movie. Like, what I loved about it was it's just it's unique and fresh. It's different. Um, so it's about a, a getaway driver, but the, kind of the whole background of the movie is set. He he's he lost his hearing when he was younger. So you, you'll feel, I'm not giving away anything in the storyline. But the whole background of the movie is him listening to his music, and like the whole movie is kind of choreographed to the music. Um, and it's actually a really good movie. It's a very fun movie to watch. It's definitely been in my 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 top three. Um, as far as uh, uh, any like people can stream on, on Netflix, you're talking about like like a like it could be like an old movie that well like I go on Netflix and there's like a shitload of movies some that I've never heard of and I just some are really good but I I'm, but mostly just hitting them off. There's chance. one movie that I I that I've recommended that has never disappointed anyone that I've, that I've told is the movie Chef. I have seen that. Okay, it's so. very good. <laughs> so I go fuck myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a self question. I needed an answer. I could have. Oh, I'd have to. Yeah, I'd have to out. like get like on my Netflix account and like scroll yeah, movies that so. I've seen and be like, yeah, that's a good one. Um, Did you see King Arthur yet? No. Is that good? I know the guy who actually directed it. It was different. Like it's filmed really cool. Yeah, I, I, I want to see it. it, and I think the best movie I've seen, my number one movie of the year so far is Dunkirk, um, which is really good, um, and Get Out, was, was phenomenal, and that was, uh, um, Keegan, uh, was, uh, the, the Keegan Peel, I forget the director's name, but it's, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a thriller, but it's kind of that interspersible comedy of 
awesome movie. Um, if you like old jumpiness in the movies and psychological thrillers, and it's, a, it's a good one. That's how, I think you can get that on Netflix right now. Get out. Get out. Yeah, that's, that's a great right. one. Yeah. So if you like psychological thrillers, that, that would be a, a good one I would recommend. Definitely top three of the year. It's awesome. Very fun movie to watch. It's not going to be like a, a nominated for an Academy Award or anything, but it's, it's a really well written, well acted, well directed movie. Um, and it's hard to do like that genre well, and uh, like it's kind of like half horror psychological thriller. Um, and it's really, really good. So we hit deadlifts, we hit hip hop, we hit cats, a lot of movies, and we hit movies, specifically Star Wars. I think we hit it all, man. We hit it all. We hit it all. <laughs> and the only thing I was like. We talk about like favorite '80s cereals or something, and, and uh, we be good to go. I was still eating uh, soft <laughs> food and breast milk in the '80s, so <laughs> true. All right. so our, our favorite old like '80s cartoons. I'm sure you still watch '80s cartoons. Or something. I don't know. I don't know when they started. Like gummy uh-huh. bears, Dungeons and Dragons. Gummy bears was a cartoon. Disney's gummy bears. I didn't know. I thought it was just a candy. Not the candy, <laughs> but, uh, but it was. Uh, that was a good one. They had moved on to. Bears by the time I, <laughs> I was a big like uh, early '90s Nickelodeon kid. Okay. Rocco's Modern Life. No big. No watch. No. It, it definitely had a little bit of more like dark. I remember humor. the only thing on Nickelodeon I watched as a kid was you can't do that on television. That was more of an that. '80s. That was more of an '80s like live that live show kids show. I really I was yeah. showing my youth right now. Yeah. I watched a lot of Nickelodeon. Now I feel old. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, well, we've breached an hour. So, any last questions? Yeah, any, anything. Um, one person asked, what would you say to a young coach who wants to start writing but sometimes suffers from imposter syndrome? Ah, yeah. Um, that's a tough one, because I think even writers who write come across that. It is a thing, imposter syndrome. And I, I honestly, the full disclosure, I, I feel that quite often. Going to listen to me, like what I think they do, thankfully. But, um, you know, again, it just comes down to one of those things where nothing new has been written, uh, and you gotta you gotta understand that your your experiences, your your um, interpretation, is what's unique and different. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can write about shoulder assessment, and, like feel like, oh man, no one's gonna listen to me. But if you write it in a way that's, people love stories. So if you can implement some kind of story to that, like here's an example of a client I had, and you know, we did this issue, we did this, and we got this improvement, that's, people would read that. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add about imposter syndrome. But it is a thing, like I, I definitely, every now and then, I'm like, yep, I shouldn't be, I'm not as good as I think I am, and this sucks, and I'm horrible. And I always figure that like, if you try to write to the peop- to potential clients instead of your peers, it's gonna turn out better. Um, because chances are your potential clients haven't heard a lot of this stuff before. I'm sure your peers have heard it. You're not trying to impress them. They're not going to pay you money for your services. I always think of writing as like lead generation. People are going to read it. They're going to be like, man, that Tony guy is cool. And now I'm going to go pay him to train me. Your peers aren't necessarily going to do that. So if you focus more on the, the people you're going to help as opposed to your peers who you're trying to impress, that should help with a lot of the imposter syndrome thing. And I remember, I forget who it was, that I, it might have been Stephen King, um, but like if you if you write to a person of one, like when you're writing an article on whatever, if you if you write it in, in the, under the context, like I'm writing this article for this person, you know, explaining X, Y, and Z, then that, that will, I think that's kind of what you're alluding to, like you're, just, you're writing it for your clients. Like, for and chances are, I, I, I know I get a lot of my writing ideas from questions that I've been asked by my clients. So if you keep that one client in mind and like you're just speaking to them, chances are there are many other people who have that same question. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Narrow that focus. Don't worry about the the broader well, audience. Kind of sees everyone. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know that's a that's a thing that I remember when I first started writing, like getting criticism. I was like, oh man, people are like talking shit about me. Like this is the worst day ever. Like, but, I mean, you get over that pretty quickly. And it's just like you're not you're not gonna. Do so you said like it's better that way. If you're not yeah. pissing anyone off, you're probably doing True. something wrong. Yeah. There's that I, I think with the 80 10 10 rule. So like 80 or sorry, 10% of people are going to love you no matter what. 10% of people are going to hate you no matter what. And you're trying to reach the other 80%. Yeah. 
those are the people you focus your efforts on. You capture ten percent already. Fuck the ten percent who are never going to love you. Yeah, Forget yeah. about them. Eighty yep. percent. There you go. And I would say even not just a little more. Uh, what's the word? It starts with an A. Audacious. Uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> all right, all right, that one down. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone an hour and ten minutes without a mispronunciation. I'm not going to mispronounce anything. I'm feeling very fluid tonight with my vocabulary. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I'm a big believer in like splitting the crowd and just having half of people really look like love what you did. In order for someone to like really love what you do, you almost have to have like the other half not really like what you're doing. Because it's gotta be different and like very authentic to, to you. So I, I never heard the term imposter syndrome until right now, so I just kind of made up my own definition for it. But I would think you probably were suffering from imposter syndrome if you felt like you're writing just kind of please everybody sort of thing. And because if you're being truly authentic to yourself, then there's probably going to be a, a, a good portion of people that don't really like what you're, what you're talking about, how you're writing, or what you're doing. Um, so I think and it, it talks about that a lot in that book I just mentioned. And, and I've heard it in many, many places. But a lot of the best creative minds, when they, if you've actually created something, will say, try to split the crowd. You'd rather probably have 50 people that will read everything you put out and purchase anything that you write and anything you produce creatively. It's still probably going to be a much larger percentage of people that are kind of yep. 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 especially these days. And if you piss people off enough, they're still going to talk about you. It's free publicity. Yep. Just like yeah. DCE said and straight out of Compton, free publicity. Yeah. You know, the Detroit well, police, man. Bring it to full circle. Yep. From the beginning of the Hopefully it's on the beat. Yeah. Boom. With that said, um, so... He did spill a beer all over the place. I did. I, did. I, I was going to get to that. Um, so if people want to read more stuff from you, yeah. find out more about you, where can we find you? Home base is TonyJohnCore.com. That is a uh, blog, links to articles, links to podcasts, um, public speaking appearances like coming up and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's home base. And then uh, that links to all social media and everything like that, too. So rather than giving everyone like a list of 18 different things to go through. Just go to the TonyTunnelCore.com. The one and only. Yep. All right, well, thank you guys for tuning yeah, in. Do you, have any, do you have any big announcements coming up? Big announcements? Uh, Besides we're opening a gym. <laughs> that's kind of big. That's kind of big. We'll keep you posted on that. I can't, I can't think of... Uh, because they've been asked for, keep your eyes peeled for Strength House Podcast beer glasses. Those... Uh, they're in those the works. Are on the, those are close to being. Well, also, Spring House uh, curated techno list from Tony. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Which <laughs> will succinctly make itself in, in the Strength House trash can. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, if you guys enjoy what we're doing, um, as always, you know, give us a rating, give us a review on iTunes. It's the best way to help us reach as many people as possible. Uh, this will go live uh, later in the week on iTunes and YouTube. Thank you, Tony, for yeah, having yeah, us in the gym. As soon as we uh, sign off here, I'm going to scrub your floor. <laughs> we'll, it'll, be, it'll take like five seconds. <laughs> I, got, I got a slipper. Yeah. Oh, oh. That's a, that's a, a gym, gym entrepreneur uh, like a tidbit right there. Get a slipper. <laughs> I have one for my house. I love it. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next right. week. So long. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>